Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So today I'm touching on a topic that I like to bring up every now and then. Um, it's always new developments. Uh, always just like to keep my ear uh, attuned to what people are talking about. Um, you know, I've long liked to discuss the issue of race in Brazil and discussing race in Brazil leads to a whole lot of other different discussions. And, you know, just in a few decades that I've been following Brazil, there's been a lot of intriguing developments in terms of how black Brazilians see themselves and how they see the world and the country in which they live. Uh, one of the ways that we analyze this, I, these rising black identity politics is through the relationships, because um, we know Brazil has long had an, um, an idea of mixing black people out of the population by just promoting interracial unions and thus produ producing lighter skinned people. So this is a topic I've, I've touched upon in a number of videos and articles over the years. So I'm going to discuss it again today because this is a new article that came out like a couple of months ago. Today's uh, video is called For More and More Black Brazilians, a more Afrocentrado or Afrocentric love is an instrument to fight racism. OK, so before I get into today's topic, uh, make sure you like this video and share it, you know, click on the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. So let's just get directly into the video and the topic for today. So, as I just mentioned, interracial unions has long been a way since the end of the 19th century that Brazil sought to whiten the population to to the point that within a you know, they were hoping within a century that black and brown people would just disappear uh, through mixing with lighter, whiter skinned partners. OK, even though we have a, an enormous black brown population today in Brazil, you know, to me, it's, st it's still ongoing. This 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 uh, I don't know, this promotion of interracial unions and this hope for a whiter Brazil, it continues to go on, even if you don't say it's, it's, it's officially recognized. But, you know, historically, this has always been the case in Brazil. Um, the reason why I'm discussing this, and a lot of people say don't mix relationships up with politics. But as I'm, I've said this over and over, Brazil made this political when they came up with the idea of mixing darker skinned people out of the population through the promotion of interracial unions, what they call in Branca Cimento, the whitening of the population. So don't point the finger back at me when it was Brazilian elites who actually politicized relationships in the first place. Thus, this leads to the next topic, which we've I've talked a lot about, you know, this term that uh, came up, I'm going to say somewhere between 2012, 13, 14, called palmitage. Um, it's a term that they use to define people who seem to have a, a preference for having long term relationships with whiter skinned people, you know, for a number of reasons, you know, uh, the idea that people are worthy of having a white partner by them side by their size, they feel like they have more value in their life because look at the person they have, you know, that they're with. And then the lighter skinned children that they would produce. All of this is connected to palmitaging which springs out of the promotion of interracial relationships that says black and brown people, you should aspire to have whiter skinned partners so that you can help us whiten this country. Um, so then when I was talking about this, when I first started going to Brazil and I learned that this was a topic, when I would speak on this, people would automatically like, well, that's you racist North Americans. You guys segregate, you know, we mix here. So how can we have racism? Well, racism extends in relationships when you have the fact that, the people who are considered to be of lower status in the country, uh, they have aspirations of looking like the people who have higher status in the country. So it's only been in recent years. I want to say in the last maybe the last decade that this discussion that says black people need to have strong black families and black men and black women need to connect and have some type of bond. If you really want to talk about the issue of racism or what people what is defined as white supremacy. If you really want to challenge that, how do you challenge that if you continue to mix with people until your offspring look exactly like the people who you accuse of being racist? That's always been my question. You know, as much as black politics are going on in Brazil, the bottom line is that if there are no black people within the next few generations or the next four or five or six generations, this won't even be a discussion in the future because there won't be any black people left. So anyway, 
Afrocentric love is an instrument to fight racism. Couple and researchers reflect on relationships between Black people. This is a material uh, from the Atarji newspaper and website. And today's piece is by uh, Flavia Bajeto. So let me just dive on into this. In recent years, a new relationship movement has gained more and more space in Brazil. The so-called relacionamento afrocentrado, meaning Afrocentric relationship. The concept with which goes beyond the simple act of relating to others, it involves perspectives of exchange and companionship where black people choose to have relationship with other people of the same ethnicity, strengthening their ancestral ties. But what exactly does an Afrocentric relationship mean and why is it becoming so important? Digital influencer Nayada Figueiredo, 35, and engineer Carlos Vieira, 37 have an Afrocentric relationship. Together for a year and four months, the natives of, ba of Bahia or Bahians or Baianos, as they'll say in Brazil, have even been thinking about marriage. Relating to Black people was a prerequisite for Nayada and Carlos. An Afrocentric relationship is resistance and survival of our community as Blackness. It's safety and well-being. Um, maybe that's supposed to be its security and well-being. It's a challenge to the racist and stereotypical view of society about our bodies. It's demonstrating that we can love in countless ways beyond the sexualization and hypersexualization that we are uh, that we are referred to when we think of relationships with people between or between black people. It's welcoming, belonging, and a quality of life, whether emotional, psychological, or physical, said Nayada. Another picture of the couple right here. According to Carlos, in relationships with white women, he experienced situations of racial discrimination where former compa companions reproduce everyday racist comments and behavior because they didn't feel the pains of a black person. He says, my white girlfriend once discriminated against a black waiter in my presence. It hit me in an absurd way because he looked like me. He was probably my age. It could have been me. The situation was the trigger for the end of that relationship I was starting and a change in my mindset in the search for relationships with people similar to me, he said. You know, it's funny because that struck me once upon a time in my life, because at once upon a time in my life, I dated all sorts of, uh, you know, black women, non-black women, all types. And there was a period in my life when I didn't think that it really mattered. But there were situations when I was with non-black women or specifically white women and i just perceive that there are just certain things that they're just not going to understand about my experience um you know as I, I delved into my own understanding my own identity this became more and more important to me to the point where i just understood like this isn't going to work for me <laughs> you know i i need you know plus the fact that you know i i just wanted to have kids who look closer to me and I'm saying, you know, biracial kids in, in many cases do come out looking like the black parent. But I'm saying, obviously, when you mix with somebody who's not of your ethnicity, you know, it's going to be a shared appearance. Is they going to be looking partially one way and partially the other way? And so this was a decision that I made for myself several years ago as well. So I kind of understand. Un, I understood what he meant by that. You know, uh, there were girls and women in my past. I just like, you know, and like no matter how down they are. You know how much they might like black culture or whatever it is. It was like they will never really understand where I'm coming from. So, you know, I definitely understood what, what he's talking about here. Um, he continues, since I started uh, my racial literacy between 2009 and 2010, I started to value and understand my blackness more. I decided to travel in mostly black spaces and dialogue with people similar to me with similar social experiences and realize how diverse our beauty is in countless aspects and relationships with black women happen naturally, said Vieta. Okay. Um, I often mention this one particular guy. I never met this guy personally, but I used to follow him on Facebook. And I just remember some of the things that he would post in his, uh, on his, uh, his, his, his Facebook page. And just reading the things that he was writing, I came to the conclusion. I'm like, one day he was with a white woman. This is a black Brazilian guy. I think he was in Sao Paulo. And just reading the things that he was posting every day, I was like, from the things that he was talking about in terms of his identity and how he saw racial politics and racism in Brazil, I says, I don't think he's going to be with this girl too much longer, even though they had two or three you know, kids together. And true enough, I don't think it was a couple of months later until he announced that relationship had ended. 
and he started a relationship with a black girl who was going through the same switch in black identity herself. They were both people who had had previous relationships with white people, and they both came transitioned out of those relationships at the same time and ended up coming, you know, coming together. So, you know, this is something that I see with a lot of black Brazilians right now. They're all talking about this this ra re racial rereading or literacy and coming to understand how race is played out in Brazil. And the more they discover about how racism functions in Brazil, the, the less comfortable they are with being with a white partner. This is what I get from what this guy was saying. And I've read this all over the Internet. Now, this is not to say that these the rise of Afrocentric unions in Brazil has totally replaced the ideology of whitening, because you're still going to find a lot of people who put the black fist in the air and still go home to a white partner. You still got plenty of those. But I'm saying it does show that there has been a shift in how people see race, you know, the race issue in Brazil. All right. Loneliness or solely down, what they call uh, solely down uh, loneliness or the problem of, of being single or uh, solitude for years there's been a push by black brazilian women this discussion of the soli uh, solely down the mulher negra meaning the solitude or loneliness of the black woman because black women feel like they're always being passed over in relationships for non-black women this you know this was a discussion that made it into mainstream you know uh media in brazil um and so then discussion of of the solitude and the loneliness of black women actually led in some ways to this whole thing of Afrocentric love or what they call um, uh, you know, Afrocentric relationships or a more pareto, what they call black love. You know, 20 some years ago, there was no such thing as black love in Brazil. Everybody accepted the fact that you should try to, to look up, you know, hook up with a white partner. So you 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 have somebody that gives value to your life and you can have lighter skinned kids. Black Brazilians have been questioning that for a number of years now. And, and, you know, something that came out of that is this idea of Afrocentric love. And for those who are not accompanied nowadays or, or those who are not following the situation, a loneliness is still a cruel reality, especially for black women and, and for black men due to structural racism. This is what researchers and psychologists in the area of racial literacy defend. Um, a master in Ph.D. in gender studies, women and feminisms, Carla Ako, uh, Ako Chirini, 44, and the journalist Mateos Lings. These two people here, this is Carla and this is Mateos. Um, Mateos is 28. They approach the theme, reporting their personal experiences and analyzing how they are perceived by the community. According to Carla, due to numerous social factors, Black women experience greater loneliness than Black men. I see loneliness as a political position based on reinterpretations of Bell Hooks, Ana Claudia Pacheco, uh, Claudete Alves, Beatriz Nascimento. These are all well known. Of course, most people will be familiar with Bell, Bell Hooks, but Ana Claudia Pacheco did a dissertation on interracial union some years ago and this idea of loneliness of black women, as did Claudete Alves. She did a book on this also that was called, uh, uh, I think it was. Uh, Vito Ahegra, which means it's has it become the rule? She was asking, is it automatic that black men will prefer white women over black women? And then there's uh, the well-known uh, Beatriz uh, Nascimento. She was a scholar. I think she died probably about 20 to 30 years ago. People have been analyzing her work as of late as well. She continues, I think, so I think obviously that black women experience a loneliness greater than that of the black man, but structurally, black people are put in a position to lose the people they love, whether because of the formats of monogamous, monogamous relationships, and we have a larger contingent of women, a singleness, whether because of their own racism, take away from us this attribute in the relationship market. The relations of capitalism also reach the romantic field and not everyone is placed on the shelf of the other's desires. She is, there's a lot going on there. Um, a lot of people, black Brazilians have been questioning, uh, we, or speaking as black Brazilians, we are not taught to value each other. We've been misled to have, have this present preference for, for white people as if white people have more value than black people themselves. And it, it's an ongoing question. You know, it always is going to come down to personal choice, but black people are actually put in a position oftentimes and a well-known comedian, uh, Chia Ma was talking about this, like 
black people are placed in Brazil as if they don't deserve to be loved. They don't deserve to have a partner at their side, you know, long term. There was another article that I had done some years ago. It was like, how can you prefer a black partner over a white one? And so it was just naturally accepted for decades in Brazil until somebody rang the alarm and says, look, we need to analyze this. We've turned into palmitados. We've been led to become palmitados. In other words, the palmitado comes out of the term palmitaging. Uh, people have used the term to identify black men and black women who can't seem to be in a relationship with another black person. You know, whether it's because they can't find a black person, they're not interested in a black person. They have a certain level of a black person that they want to deal with that they don't have for white people or they just have an obvious preference for white people. So it's only like I said, it's only been a decade or so where people are questioning this scene, this this social engineering of desiring people with white skin. On the other hand, she evaluates that the black movement of this generation has managed to put Afrocentric love on the agenda. I think that seeing other black couples loving each other, publicizing their affections also enhances our day. So loneliness no longer has such a painful effect because relationships are with other fluidity and other configurations of affection, she says, who also reports the excess of demands for not having a relationship. The researcher believes that these demands are related to age and generational markers, which cross the racial experience, classifying people as more or less available and attractive. One thing I want to point out here is this this idea of Black people publicizing their affections. There was a campaign by the Movimento Negro, uh, Brazil's Black social movement, back in the 90s, and it was saying... uh, Beja sua mulher preta in, you know, na praça pública, which means, you know, kiss your black woman in a public square, in a public square, because there was a a sense in the streets that says black people are not supposed to show affection to each other. That's only something reserved for white people or at least a white person and a black person. Uh, So that that's supposed to be acceptable. But seeing two black people showing attraction and affection for each other is considered, you know, that's unacceptable. So it was a campaign that says, it, I mean, in the novellas, in the uh, Brazil's so, uh, novella soap operas, for years, you just didn't see black couples in those novellas. If you saw a black character on the program, they were, and I'm maybe I'm exaggerating, but it just seemed like 90 to 95 percent of the time, if there was a black character and they were in a relationship, they would always be matched with a white partner. Um, I can't remember the, the name of the uh, sociologist. I think he was, uh, I think he was from France. And he was doing a a lot of, uh, you know, racial studies in Brazil as well. And he was just like, you know, Brazilian society seems to frown upon black people being together. I I think his name was Jockey something. I'm going to have to look for his material. But I I remember when he wrote that, it it was just it just struck me. And as society has 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 engineered the public to think this way, even black people themselves have been taught to avoid other black partners. So just having a discussion now, this is a big step forward. At least that's the way that I see it. Single for eight years, Mateos Lings uh, experiences several forms of relationships with people of different races or ethnicities. But to date and but to date and have a deeper exchange in everyday life, he prioritizes black people. He says, I am a black gay man who tries his best to be aware of class race and understand how my history and attitudes influence my life, he says. This is uh, okay. This is this is again. This is Mateo's lanes. He says he's black. He's gay, and he's prioritizing relationships with uh with black people. For psychologist Iana Sampaio, twenty four, black people have difficulty finding relationships that are exposed. She also points out that this group also faces dilemmas when relating to white people. They are they are called palmiteros. They end up falling into the stereotypes that blacks themselves put out there. That is, there is a pressure when you are outside the bubble and there's another when you're inside the bubble. It seems that blacks can only relate to certain types of standards, added the psychologist. I'm curious about what she means by that, because I have another piece that I'm going to it's going to be coming up probably within the next week. Where. For years, black women have been the main ones talking about black men are palmiteros. You stampede over black women to get to white women. Right. But there's been an there's been a number of black men over the years who have pushed back saying, well, black women, you do the same thing. It's like if a black woman in Brazil is open to dating a black man, he has to be on the top status. He has to be 
what they call Puerto Chipoa, you know, uh, an A type black man. He has to be financially stable. He has, has a nice car, a nice house. He has a dress nice. He has a nice body. He's handsome. All of these things. And black men have pushed back, and said, well, you guys will take just the average guy. But to get with a black man, he has to be the top of the man menu, if you will. So this is an ongoing debate. The standards that both sides are looking at in order for them to get with a black partner. You know, it was a post that I was seeing a couple. And this is what I'm going to talk about in a future uh, video. One guy suggested that black people seem to take white people who are white leftovers. He was suggesting that black people get with the white people who white people don't want. Now, I don't know how far, you know, if he was exaggerating, but that's what he said in the post. And then when I looked at the video that he was reacting to, it was like, oh, there's another black guy who was saying, look, black men don't even approach these type of black women because they don't got eyes for you unless you're on this level of a black man. Or if they can't get that one, they'll just get an average white guy. I'm going to talk about that in a future video. Black love can be the cure and the path to a never before experienced relationship. OK, um, have to talk about that because it's there's a saying that's going around in black circles in Brazil that says Amor preto cura, which means black love heals, black love cures. OK, here we have Felipe Dorne, Dornelas. Uh, he's the creator of an app called Denga Love, which I'm going to talk about right now. Felipe Dornelas, 31. Again, this guy here from Rio de Janeiro is the creator of an app exclusively aimed at finding an amor preto or black love. It's called Denga Love. Created in 2022, the app brings together more than 150,000 users and is available for the iOS and Android. Bahia is currently among the three states engaged in the app with more than 15,000 registered people with more than 80% in Salvador, Bahia alone, Salvador being the capital city of Bahia. OK, so this is the app called Denga Love. The software developer was a user of relationship applications, but always found always had a preference in having relationships with a black person. However, in the most popular apps, he found it difficult to meet people of the same ethnicity. After this inconvenience, he decided to create an app where black people could have exchanges of affection between them. I have had several negative experiences on other apps to the point that people verbalize prejudices directly towards me. But in addition to being a programmer, I'm also a person who doesn't really like taking things home. There was a day when a situation like this happened, but it happened at a time when I had the time and resources to solve the problem. I put it in my head and I put it in my head that this was it and started writing what would be the first code of the app, says Felipe. So here's the app itself. Um, this is um, what's that dude's name? Uh, Jose Cipo. He's you know he's a popular uh, social influencer. So they were promoting this Denga Love app for a while. Uh, obviously, it's grown since it was first released. According to Filippi, the app is a safe place for Black people. It is not separation, but union and welcoming. I imagine children being born to Black parents who met inside Denga, bringing bringing racially conscious people together is one of the steps so that in the future we have more racially conscious people. In addition, I hope that we can be the main meeting point when a black person thinks about relating to someone, he explained. The software developer believes that Afrocentric love is a decision. When someone chooses to relate to a black person, they have found uh, reasons to seek this deeper cultural connection. Although not all black people understand black love, most are willing and able to live with it or to experience it rather. Black love can be the cure and the way to a relationship experience never before experienced. But know that without sincerity, active listening and empathy, it will be just another one. Be sincere, show affection and be patient, advises Felipe. OK. So there was a lot packed into this 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 uh, this article. You know, the main thing that caught my attention was, again, what the what the guy uh, what's his name? I think his name was Carlos Vieta, this guy here just talking about his experiences with white women and just the feeling that, you know, I, I've said this before, just because a person of another race is with you as an individual, it doesn't mean they don't harbor certain racist sentiments. You know, I was in a situation years ago myself where I could remember that in the eyes of this white girl's stepfather, even though he didn't like other black people, he had got accustomed to me as if I was different from my group. You know, I wasn't the N word anymore. I was just Marcus. 
So this is what I'm saying. It's not for me to decide or convince people of how they feel when they're in interracial relationships. When these types of situations arise, people have to be aware of that themselves. Um, so anyway, I wanted to discuss a few links here. Amor Preto and Podadamento and Cure, Black Love, Empowering and the Cure. OK, that's talking about Denga Love, what they've developed. This is now an app. This is their, they were calling it the Afro or Afro, the African Tinder. You know, they will say that I, I, they call people of African descent in Brazil. They call them Afro descendants. So then it's just saying people of African descent. Could this be the Tinder app for them? The startup releases an app for relationships with black people. You know, I've always talked about palmitaging. What people are calling this a very big relationship of self-hate. Say love has no color. Palmitaging is not just about affection. Palmitaging is the discomfort in thinking about race and relationships and on and on. If you want to understand what I'm saying about palmitaging, definitely go to the blackbraziltoday.com uh, blog and just punch in the word palmitaging and you see a bunch of articles on it. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that this question of the whole reason that this is coming up now among black Brazilians is the development of black identity politics. Now, I just my last video, I talked about this debate that's going on. Well, it went on during the Olympics where Afro-Brazilians wanted to see black Olympic winners recognized as black while whites were saying, no, they're just Brazilians. You guys are being divisive. So the discussion about black love now has come along with the development of black identity politics, which is the reason why I feel every time an article pops up, I, mean, I have to share it with my uh, with my subscribers just to give you, you give you an idea of this discussion that's going on about race in Brazil today. Anyway, um, what did you think about today's article? Um, Definitely share your thoughts in the comment section. Like this video, share this video. You know, drop a, a like I said, drop a comment in the comment section. Consider subscribing to this channel, clicking on the notification bell so that you'll know when I put up a new video. With that said, I'm going to end this video here and request that you all come back. Check out the next video that I post.